Hey everybody, this is Carlo from Forge Glory Custom Leathercraft. I'm going to make another video here. I haven't done one of these in a long time. I uh, just want to show how I make the stuff that I make for you. So what I'm making today is a, um, is a bedroll, the Generation 2. Um, you know, probably... Uh, bedrolls are probably the second best-selling things that I make. The first being heat shields. But we start out with the leather, and I wet the leather. Now this has a, a technical term called casing the leather. Why it's called casing, I have no idea. I probably should look that up sometime since this is what I do. But it's called casing the leather. You wet it down and you let the water soak into the leather, which makes it pliable so that you can uh, you can apply the art that you want to do. And so we start out with the edge. The edge treatment that I do on just about, well, I can do it on anything that you want, but um, The way that, um, but but it's on a lot of my products. The way that I that I used to do it is I used this tool, and I would sit here and I would go down the whole length, stamping this tool in with a hammer, and then go down. And then you have to reverse it and stamp it the other way to make the edge treatment, and that took a very long time. And then I found a, a guy on. Um, on Facebook that makes these tools um, and he does them custom to what you need so as you can see it's the same it's the same design he made it for me and I am so grateful because this takes a lot less time to use than um, than the one punching tool so you put it on there with the leather wet and you got to put some pressure on it and it's a roller, so you can go all the way down. And I like to kind of go back and forth, back and forth, just so it makes a good, a good impression into the leather. Hope I'm not blocking it here. <laughs> Hope I'm not blocking the camera here. Just like that. You can do it on both sides. So you make your initial line so you know where to go. You just kind of rock it back and forth. This tool has helped me save hours, <laughs> countless hours of work. And then, and then my ruler. But yeah, as you can see, this tool was a major, major time saver. I love that thing. And I kind of, I had discovered them a long time ago. I just didn't think it would work for curved edges, but I figured out how to make it work for curved edges too, not just these, these straight lines. So he was a, uh, a wonderful discovery for me. And his name for anybody who wants to do leather crafting, if you want the best tools on the planet, his name is Sergei Nesky. Uh, he sells on Etsy. And, you know, he's not paying me to say this. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a customer. So, But uh, he sells his stuff on Etsy and through uh, Springfield Leather Company. So if you go to Springfield Leather Company's uh, website, they have a bunch of tools there. Um, some of his more common tools that, that he makes. Uh, if you contact him on Etsy, um, he can make something completely custom for you, like he did for me. Because this wasn't a tool that he usually carries. He had to make it uh, thicker and put the, the specific art on it. And, and let me tell you, I, I am so grateful to him. Because <laughs> this really does save a lot of time which you guys should be very grateful for because the less time I spend uh, 
working <laughs> or doing doing specific tasks, uh, the faster I can I can get your products out to you. Oh yeah. So this one is going to have. Um, Marine Corps, <laughs> you can probably hear my family in the background talking because I do, uh, my shop is in a separate room in my house and they can get a little loud over there. Um, but this uh, bedroll is going to have some Marine Corps art. Um, it's going to be the um, Eagle Globe and Anchor. And, uh, and then it's going to have SFMF over the Eagle Globe and Anchor. I know you Marines know what that means. The rest of us, uh, I think I figured it out by now. But every time I show that, every time I show something with that art, a lot of Marines like to laugh. They think it's hilarious, but. Not everybody knows what SFMF means in the Marine Corps. So I did that. I didn't cut all the way through um, to make the oblong holes for the straps. I'm just kind of marking it so I know where to start this. My next lines. So a very common thing when making lines is kind of overshooting. So what I do is I come to the end, I lay my knife flat and just go backwards. So that way I don't, because when you're coming like this, it's kind of hard to see where the end is. And sometimes you'll nick it with the blade. So I just come down square, a little trick of the trade. It, 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 honestly, it's one of those details that only other leather crafters notice. <laughs> I've never had somebody who brought my product and was like, oh, I can see a little nick where it wasn't supposed to be. But, you know, it's one of those other leather crafters notice. So, so you should probably do it. All right, there we go. I need some more water here. And see the, the water, it just makes the leather so much. Well, I mean, really, you can't stamp the leather unless you have like a pneumatic press um, unless it's wet if you have a press then yeah you, you can press an image into the leather but you can't use these kind of these kind of tools but as you see everything that I do is done with hand tools this is, uh, between this and scissors, is probably the most, <laughs> the most difficult tools I use. I don't know, I, I like the feel of something having been made by hand. It gives it a little more character, you know, as they say, yeah, yeah. A handmade quality to it. You know, I mean, you can get good enough to where every single thing that you do looks exactly like the other one if you're doing things by hand, but that's. I'm not at that level yet. I don't know anybody that is. I make it look similar. There we go. Now I'm going to wet the middle part. And this is what I do. Uh, sometimes I draw out the art. If it's art that's already available on the internet, I'll just print it out. Or somebody will send it to me and be like, hey, I want this. And, and so sometimes the art is drawn by hand. Sometimes the patron will send it to me. If it's something common that I can use and print out directly from the internet and not have any problems such as you know the Eagle Globe and Anchor 
then I'll go ahead and print it out. But no, I am not supposed to do um, anything that um, I'm not supposed to do any art, you know, that is uh, trademarked or anything like that. So you could ask me, but I'll have to say no. But the EGA is not trademarked. All right, uh, Diet Dr. Pepper break. Between me and my family, we probably. We should probably buy stock in Dr. Pepper just to get our losses back <laughs> for how much we drink. There we go. Just tape it down. I use masking tape because it easily comes up and doesn't damage the leather. So if the leather's wet and you put tape on it, you can damage the leather. Masking tape is the uh, the easiest is easiest to take off. And so with the art on top of the leather. I'll just start tracing it. Now, I wish I was one of those guys who could just freehand the art directly onto the leather, but I am not that guy. Uh, that is that is not within my skill set. I have to have it drawn out on paper, or printed out in this case, um, before I will start working on leather. I took, um, let's see, I went to school for architecture, and so I learned how to draw, but I learned how to draft a lot better, <laughs> you know, using rulers and squares and compasses and all that. So that I'm com I'm comfortable with. Uh, I am not comfortable freehanding anything. And one other thing. Oh man! So I've had some people ask for this. Um, they'll ask for portraits. I refuse <laughs> to do portrait of a person. Now, if you send me a drawing of a person, I can trace the drawing, no problem. But if you want me, if you want to send me a picture of a person and want me to go off of that and make a drawing out of it, nope, I'm sorry, I will have to refuse because you will be upset with me. It'll be an episode of that, uh, oh, that one show where they, they redo bad tattoos. <laughs> you will be very upset with my art when it comes to, to faces. Now, if it's a drawing of a face, I can do a drawing of a face. But coming up with a face on my own to draw and to do, no, that's not mad. Nope, never been able to do it. And uh, so, I mean, there, there's a joke with, uh, with Marvel uh, comic books that uh, one of the artists could not draw feet. And so whenever he drew a comic book hero, um, you never saw the hero's feet. <laughs> it was always disguised by clouds or words or whatever. He, he could not draw feet. And uh, so that's the way I am with faces and hands. I cannot draw hands on my own. Now, if there's a, if there's a drawing of a hand that you want to send me, you want me to put it on there like, you know, I've done praying hands. Um, you know, if it's already drawn up, I can trace it. That's fine. But if you want me to draw hands, mm -mm, it, it's gonna, it's gonna look like some kind of monster. But as with all the art that I, that I do, um, you know, you just pretty much send me what you want. And if I can do it, I'll make it happen. If I can't, then I'm sorry. 
<laughs> and if you see, there might be some of these lines that I'm doing over and over again. And it's because, you know, I, I might have done it, then I forgot. But I just want to make sure, so. Go over to the second time. So on, on original art, uh, somebody describes to me what they want. I have to draw it up. Um, I'm pretty much, I pretty much have to draw it, I think, three or four times. So there's the original drawing, and then there's drawing it onto the leather. And then I have to carve it into the leather, and then I have to dye it <laughs> into the leather. So every piece of art, so what is that? The, the drawing, the tracing, uh, the carving, and the dyeing. So every piece of art, I go over four times. So it's not a... Uh, not that simple. And then, heaven forbid I mess up on something to the point to where I can't fix it, then I have to start all over. <laughs> So if, and at any point when I'm drawing the, when I'm doing the four drawings, if I mess up anything, I have to start all over. And that's part of, you know, that's just part of running a business, you know. You work that into your cost of everything. Uh, chalk it up to R&D, research and development. And you have to budget for it or you go broke because you will, you know, in any business, you're going to make mistakes. And that's just that's just the cost of doing business. Now, you want to make as little mistakes as you can, of course, you know, you don't want to be ne negligent, but it's part of the cost. Well, looks like this is coming wrong really quickly. That's why I chose this art to do. Um, on the video it's because it is a good piece of art it is a good looking piece of art uh once it's all all on the leather and everything but i'm so familiar you know i've done so many of the eagle globe and anchor or ega as they say that uh you know i know how to do this i can i can pump these out pretty fast because i'm very comfortable with with doing the art it's not it's not just simply the fact that i'm tracing it but I know this art very well. I've done a I've done a whole lot for them for Marines. And then what I do is I hold down the, the down the when I think I'm done, I'll hold it down and I'll lift it to see if there were any any lines that I missed. Yep, and I did miss some. It's this right here. So that way, instead of taking the whole thing off and then looking and then being like, oh, I missed this, I missed that. Um, and then trying to put it back lined up perfectly. <laughs> I did that before and that doesn't uh, that doesn't work out very well. So I've learned to do this. eagle gotta get his eye in there and these feathers i'll do the feathers later later i know there's got to be feathers there okay and i think we're good so now the 
art is drawn on and that gives me the template so I can start carving. So now we're going to start carving into the leather with this. It's called a swivel knife. Very one of the basic tools of leather tooling. If you're going to be leather tooling, this is the this is what you want. This is what you got to get. And there are different thoughts on this. Uh, some people will, on how to, the best way to tool, some people will do, um, you know, they'll put a weight on the, at the end of their, of their leather to keep it down in place. Me, as you see, I prefer um, moving the leather as I work instead of just keeping it sedentary in one place. Then as I'm doing it, I don't know if, you, if you've noticed, but my, my cuts aren't exactly on the lines. And that's okay, because as you're, you know, you should be able to kind of move things around just a little bit if needed as you're, as you're carving into into the leather. The worst thing that you can do with art is be exact. <laughs> and that was a, you know, coming from an architectural mind, um, that was a hard lesson for me to learn, that art should not be exact. And one, one place that I learned it, strangely enough, was when I was a chef. Um, one of the chefs that I worked for, he was teaching me how to do ice carvings. And so I went up to do the ice carving, and it was supposed to be a figure of a person. And I start, you know, doing my, my measurements. And he said, no, 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 you don't do exact measurements. It's like, what is the focus of this ice carving that you're doing? And I was like, okay, well, I guess the person. He's like, yes, but do you want people to focus their eyes on the arms, the legs, the body, the head? What do you want them to focus on? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> He's like, well, you need to make that decision. I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I, I just wanted to carve something out of ice. And he's like, because whatever you accentuate in your carving, that is what's going to draw the eyes of the person. So if you want them to really look at the eyes of the person, then the eyes need to be the main focus and you need to make the eyes a little bigger. If you want them to look at the arms because maybe they're holding something, then you need to make the arms a little bigger than a normal human's arms so that their eyes are drawn to that. And I was like, oh, wow, I didn't even... And uh, as I studied art a little more as a chef and when I went to architecture school, I noticed that, you know, artists do accentuate the main idea that they are trying to get across by making it just slightly bigger so that your eye is your eye the so that the person who's looking at it will definitely look at at what they want and so no art is true to life you know nothing is a one-to-one -one scale and that's the you know it's a thought process that thought thought process that goes through the mind of the of the artist is you know what do I want them to look at, and so what I want them to look at is what I'm going to accentuate in the art instead of making a photocopy of what it is. So as you see, when we, as we carve the leather, um, it makes the art pop out a little more. 
And then when we bevel it, oh no, that's five times because we have to bevel it. Not only do we carve it, but we have to bevel it. So we go over the art five times, not just four. Because we carve it, we bevel it. And once you get used to it, I mean, like me, you know, I'm zipping through this kind of fast and it's because it's art that I'm used to. I know what I want it to look like in the end. I know how to get there. So I know what specific cuts to make into the leather. But that's, you know, years of practice. <laughs> I mean, I've been doing leather work either as, you know, for Forge Glory or as a hobby uh, for eight years now. Uh, I mean, technically I did some when I was a kid, but, uh, stuff that I'm actually shipping to people, <laughs> not just making and keeping for myself, but stuff that I'm actually shipping to people. Uh, it's been about eight years. You know, we started out as a hobby and got to the point to where, you know, Uncle Sam wanted his part, so I had to, had to make it a business and pay my taxes. And I'm grateful for it, you know, it's been, it's been a good source of income. I was able to quit my good job at Pepsi to do this full time. Um, can not complain. And of course, all of you who have purchased from me, you made it, you made my dreams possible. Like when I first started doing it, I was like, yeah, this is my delusion of grandeur that I'm going to make a business out of this and I'm going to be able to support my family. And, uh, you know, my wife was like, that's nice. <laughs> One of my aunts was like, you're kidding me. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, you know, I mean, that'd be cool, right? I mean, we're just, you, you know, if it happens, it happens. If it's not, if it doesn't, you know, I got a job. You know, I was still in the army when I started tinkering with, uh, with leather work. I was like, you know, I have a job, so, you know, opening your own business is a little scary because, you know, other businesses, you, you got a paycheck. And when it's your own, you don't make money, you don't have a paycheck, so that'll scare anybody. So I did it on the side as a hobby, and then it got big enough that I started it as a business. It was still just a, you know, it was still a, high, a side hustle. And then um, it got big enough, and my disabilities got too bad that I was able to quit working at Pepsi by that time I was already out of the army but I was able to quit working at Pepsi and do leather work full time and uh you know with COVID uh things were tough <laughs> you know but things were tough for everybody so that's normal but I've certainly been blessed There we go. We're just about to finish up the carving part of the of tooling the art. And now we're going to tool the art. I don't know if you guys see, but right here there's kind of like an indention. And that is because of the natural scar that is in the leather. Um, you know, uh, other companies would use resin you know, some type of resin to, um, to fill that in. I feel like that's cheap. <laughs> you know, this is real leather. This is real cow leather. This was an animal. It had scars. It got hurt. It, uh, hit a barbed wire fence, got bit by a coyote, whatever happened to the animal. And, uh, I just think that that adds to 
the overall look of the leather. And, uh, you know, that's what my shop's all about. It's, you know, it's old world techniques. You know, everything's done by tools. And everything's hand done. So what I'm doing now uh, is beveling the art into the leather. I'm not sure if you can see how well you can see this in the, uh, in the video, but it really makes the art pop out. It makes the art look uh, three-dimensional. Like it's coming out of the uh, coming out of the leather. It's not just something that's stamped on. It's not burnt into the leather. You know, it, it has a little a little bit of body body to it. A little bit of life. So when this dries, that little divot will go away. <laughs> because right now that it's wet, it's wanting to, to fold in. But when it dries, it'll, it'll dry out and we'll get rid of that. But in the meantime, I've got to make sure that all the lines are done properly. There we go. Like I said, you know, my technique, uh, I like moving the leather and the tool as I tool the leather. Some people, while they're doing this part, they'll hold the tool there and they'll tap to make the bevel. I, I just found regular hand pressure. And it depends on what I'm doing. There, there are some things where I really want it to to have that definition and so you know I'll use the I'll use the my mall um, to do it but most things you know it's good enough which is good old hand pressure I just gotta have strong hands if you have weak hands you're gonna need the mall <laughs> I'm not sure how much this is picking up, how much this is, you know, picking up, but when you look at it off of a camera, it looks so much better. You know, it actually kind of comes to life. It makes it really pop. And it does help to be a little ambidextrous because <laughs> you're going to be doing leather work so you can switch between hands. But there we go. And so we'll make that pop up a little more. Hmm. I'm missing lines here. Uh, here's my tool. So you, you see how, you know, the globe lines there? It's supposed to be one right here. And then another one right about here. A lot of it's hidden by the, the letters, but there we go. Oops. Oh, no. 
I went in between and they're supposed to be. So we'll flatten that out, get rid of it. Oh, when we dye it, won't you won't be able to see it. But there we go. That's how that's how I do the art. I uh, started out with beveling or doing the edges, uh, the edge treatment, doing the art. And now uh, this has to set off to the side to dry. Because if I start dyeing it while it's still wet, the dye will not penetrate the leather as well. And uh, I don't want that to happen. So this has got to dry. Um, sometimes by the end of the day, it's good. Uh, sometimes I got to wait 24 hours. It just depends on how humid it is here in Tennessee. Um, but yeah, that's how we do it. Once it's done drying, we'll dye it. In the meantime, I'll be dyeing the other pieces that, that go to this. Anyway, remember here at Forge Glory, we're all about the leather, your design, and my shop coming together to make some awesome products. Have a wonderful day.